and oil, flowing from the depths of the earth, serving man in a thousand different ways. I help communications on the land, sea and air routes of the world. For ships, fuel oil. For aircraft, high octane spirit. For cars and lorries, gasoline. For locomotives, diesel oil. I am all around you. In the surface of your roads. In the polish upon your floors. In the paints upon your walls. In the protection of your roofs. In the warmth of your home. I fight friction and wear, in every gear, in every bearing, in every moving part. I am oil, liquid mineral, out of which a thousand useful products grow. Listen to my story, the story of my origin, and of how men carry on the never-ending search to find me. Well. How about it, Professor? Oh, uh, yes, yes. <coughs> <coughs> uh, to understand the theory of how oil is formed, we must know something about the earth in which it is found. Most of us think of the earth as a solid, unchanging mass. But this is not the case. Volcanoes, earthquakes, geysers, and other disturbances prove that powerful forces of heat and pressure are at work within the Earth. These internal forces constantly act upon the Earth's outer shell or crust, causing some areas to sink, others to buckle or fold. In fact, it's something like what happens to the skin of a plum as it wrinkles into a prune. While these powerful forces are working from within the Earth, there are also many external forces acting upon the surface of the Earth. Wind, rain, snow, ice and changes in temperature all combine to wear away the higher places and so to fill up the lower parts. Rivers and streams carry countless tons of loose materials towards the sea. Age after age, layer upon layer, this sediment is built up and during the process millions of dying plants and marine animals are buried in the layers or strata. These layers of sediment are often several miles in depth and their gradually increasing weight exerts a tremendous pressure on the lower strata, causing them to solidify. Thus mud becomes shale. Sands become sandstone. Skeletons of marine animals become limestone. The remains of plants and marine animals are preserved by salt water and petroleum is eventually produced from this organic matter by heat and pressure. Beneath the layers of sediment, the earth shrinks. This causes the layers gradually to wrinkle or fold. During the folding process, the oil and water are squeezed out of the strata in which they are formed and concentrated in the more porous layers. The oil and water separate and oil forms at the top since oil is lighter than water. This is a typical oil trap a dome-like structure or anticline. The salt water has forced the oil to the top. Layers of harder rock above and below prevent the oil from escaping. Now, gas, lightest of all, collects in the upper part of the dome. Another typical oil trap is called a fault. Often the strains set up in the Earth's crust may cause a fracture of the oil-bearing rock. 
Under tension, one side may slip down along the fault plane. Under compression, one side may be forced up along the fault plane. The oil is trapped by the cap rock above and by a layer of impervious rock at the fault plane. Sometimes oil may seep out of the earth and be found on the surface. These oil seepages may be caused by a number of conditions. For instance, by leakage along a fault plane, by fracturing of the cap rock above the dome, or by erosion of the strata over the oil trap. Oil seepages are rare, and for many years they formed man's only source of oil. But uh, that, that's another story. Yes, that is another story. It's a story which takes us back about 5,000 years, back to ancient Babylon. Here, men are dipping torches in cauldrons of heated asphalt. The torches burn with an eerie light, while men bow down in worship. They think the oil is holy, mysterious. It was still mysterious even a century ago, when only the medicine man made anything out of it. I'm Guan Louisiana, my true love for the sea. It rained all night the day I left, weather it was dry. Sun so hot, I froze to death. Susanna, don't you cry. Oh, Susanna, oh, don't you cry for me. I've come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. Oh, Susanna, oh, don't you cry for me. I've come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. Step right this way, folks. Yes, sir, folks, it's the petroleum panacea. Petra means rock, oleum means oil. That's why we call it rock oil. Guaranteed to cure dandruff, stomachache, fallen arches. Takes the sweet out of your knees. You might even try it on your wagon wheels. And during Step all this right time, this people folks, used only the oil which the they found on the surface. They knew nothing of the great wealth of oil hidden beneath the surface. For their candles and oil lamps, they depended on oil from sperm whales. But every year, sperm whales were getting scarcer. Then someone refined a lamp oil. It was made from coal oil and petroleum seepages. Lamp oil proved to be a satisfactory source of light, but as the demand for it increased, the sources of supply decreased. Then one day, a Mr. George Bissell saw a news item about somebody drilling for salt. That gave him an idea. If they could drill for salt, why shouldn't he drill for oil? Bissell's company engaged a Colonel Drake, and they decided to start work near an oil spring at Titusville, Pennsylvania. Drake's job was one that had never been attempted before. He was going to drill for oil without benefit of science and with very crude equipment. Day by day, foot by foot, they forced their crude drill into the ground. And at 69 feet, they struck oil. Drake's discovery was followed by a period of wild speculation. Sites were selected by the toss of a coin. by using magic twigs or divining rods. A few men made quick fortunes, but most lost heavily, and the easily found oil deposits were soon exhausted. There was plenty of oil in the ground, but nobody knew how to look for it. It was in 1860 that the first serious attempts to discover oil deposits 
were made by geologists. At this time, they depended entirely upon surface observations. They first noted the layout of wells in existing oil fields, observing that those in a certain pattern were producers, whilst others in the vicinity were not. They also observed that the successful wells were often in the middle of a valley, and that the hills on both sides had strata which sloped away downwards. This indicated that the valley was over a dome or anticline, the top of the anticline having been worn away by erosion. From this, geologists concluded that oil was most likely to be found in anticlinal structures. For many years, surface methods alone were employed, until most of the easily found anticlines had been investigated. Then, with the invention of the motor car, there came a big demand for a new petroleum byproduct, gasoline, and geologists were called upon to make greater efforts. They knew that there must be large numbers of anticlinal structures hidden underground, but the question was how to find them. So they had to devise various methods of seeing into the ground. One of these methods is to make test drillings to obtain samples of the rock strata beneath the surface of the earth. By analysis and measurement of these samples, the types of strata and their inclination can be determined. The microscope may reveal in the samples traces of marine animals that help in identifying the various types of strata. In another method, the principle of magnetism is used. Most rocks contain a proportion of iron compounds which make them magnetic. Magnetic intensities can be measured with a magnetometer. In places where rock strata are deeply buried, the magnetic intensity will be weaker than in places where the rocks are nearer the surface. The strongest magnetic intensity often indicates the center of an anticline. A similar method uses a gravimeter, which measures the force of gravity exerted by rocks. Heavy rocks near the surface will exert a stronger pull than the same types of rock more deeply buried. <laughs> One of the most successful methods uses the principle of sound reflection. Sound is rather like a rubber ball which rebounds more strongly from, say, um, a hard tabletop than from a soft pillow. In the same way, sound is reflected better from hard rocks, such as limestone, than from softer rocks, such as shale or sandstone. So, suppose we dig a hole in the ground, and at the bottom explode a charge of dynamite. The sound of the explosion travels down through each layer of rock, and is reflected back to the surface. The reflections from the hard limestone are stronger than the reflections from the softer sandstone and shale. To detect these very small differences in sound volume, a seismometer is used. And since sound always travels at a certain known speed, we can determine the depth of each layer of rock. From experience, we can identify each layer of rock by the intensity of its sound reflection. The seismograph records a wiggle for each of the various reflected sounds in the order in which they reach the surface. The wiggles from the layers of limestone are much more pronounced than the others. Also, by recording the time each sound takes to reach the surface, we can calculate the depths of the various strata. Thus, by creating several explosions, short distances apart, the geologists can form a picture of the underground rock formations. Today, all the resources of science, from soil analysis to aerial survey, help the geologist. But the geologist can only point out land which might yield oil. Yes, I 
am oil. After being almost ignored for thousands of years, I have grown in a century to become one of the world's biggest industries. From Colonel Drake's crude well, producing a few barrels a day, to an enormous output of millions of barrels a day. From a hit or miss pursuit on the part of the adventuresome few, to a vast, highly organized industry, employing millions of people. Petroleum and its byproducts have become an indispensable feature of civilian and industrial life. It takes a lot of oil to fill the world's everyday needs. Where can it be found? How much oil remains hidden in the world? Well, millions of acres of land remain unexplored. Many producing areas are not yet fully developed. Natural gas, coal and shale are possible sources of petroleum as yet unneeded. To keep pace with the ever-increasing demand, the search for new oil fields must go on. This is the challenging responsibility of those who form the oil industry. <laughs> 